Hi, it's Jason. I recently wrote a blog about what it is like to be called by God, and I wanted to read that to you. So, excuse me, I'm reading from my computer, but I also want to have my voice in this. What is it like to be called by God? Do you hear a voice? Is there thunder and lightning, a burning bush, something dramatic like in the movies, or a whisper? I don't think everybody's experience is the same. The following is the experience I had when I was at my rock bottom, and I believe I was called by God. I was middle-aged, 44 to be exact. I'd only been a believer for a few years and a true neophyte in my faith journey. I was a regular church goer and had participated in a mission trip to central Mexico. Other things were taking place in my life, which made this a less than optimal time to have an encounter with the Almighty One. I had a degenerative eye condition and it had deteriorated to a point where I had to make the difficult decision to stop driving. Actually, that decision was made for me as I almost had an accident with some pedestrians. And I couldn't be sure whether it was as a result of my eyesight. And I felt a duty to assume that my lack of eyesight was the culprit of the almost accident. And I stopped driving immediately. I was divorced with three children who depended on me. I was also unemployed. I received a letter from the government stating that I was permanently and totally disabled. The confluence of all these circumstances percolated and it wasn't long before I found myself in a deep, deep depression. I was struggling to make it through each day. I was non-responsive to people who were reaching out and I failed to care for myself and my children. I had to find something to do to get myself out of bed, so I asked to volunteer at a homeless shelter. I always felt better when I served others. I hoped this, this act of service might help to halt the progression of my depression or at least give me reprieve for a day. It was a midweek day and my volunteer shift extended from 10 a.m. to noon. I was in charge of managing showers and laundry for the day. In a two hour time period, the shelter would offer showers and laundry on a first come first serve basis to the city's homeless population. At 10 a.m., the doors would open and a surge of humanity would suddenly be standing before me. I had a clipboard, a mighty artifact that presumed to give me power. I scribed the names of the people in line one by one until there were no more in line. Then I admitted two people into separate shower rooms and helped others start their laundry, ensuring that the machine was not overloaded and maximized at the same time. While I waited for the first set of clients to finish their showers and the first load of laundry to finish cycling, I checked my clipboard for the next name on the list, and that is when it happened. I was standing in a small hallway facing east, holding the clipboard, listening to a person singing in the shower to my right, the whir of the laundry machine behind me, and a host of volunteers in the galley kitchen making food for breakfast, and they're off to the left. And there were a lot of homeless people, our clients, uh, talking about all shades of life on the other side of the door at the end of the hallway that I was standing in. The volume of all of that ambient noise slowly silenced to nothing. It seemed like all my other senses stayed intact. The lessening volume was imperceptible at first, then it was pervasive. And it was at that moment that a thought was put into me. I am running across America. I was still. Then the sound of the environment came back as quickly as it had eroded. I felt scared. My knees shook. I steadied myself by reaching for the wall. I remember asking myself, did that just happen? I knew what just happened was real. I knew I was the only one who perceived it. I also knew I could choose to ignore it, tell nobody, act like it never happened, finish my shift, go back to my house and continue my depression. Or I could choose to respond in the affirmative, be obedient, submit all my desires and my life.
to the will of another. I chose the latter. And knowing the feeble human that I am, I believed I had to tell one other person to hold myself accountable. And I texted my mom. I texted, I'm going to run across America. And 30 seconds later, she texted back, I'm in. I had never had a desire to run across America. I was unemployed, didn't have the money to prepare for such an undertaking. And, oh wait, I didn't think I was physically capable of running across the United States, although I'd never speak that to another person. Three young children depended on me, lived with me half the time. I was severely depressed and no state to cross the U.S. on foot. It was impossible. It couldn't happen. Not with me. I'm nobody. I'm a depressed, unemployed, blind person who's a failure. What I learned over the next 20 months is the following. With God, all things are possible. That's from Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. That's from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And the final thing I learned was light overcomes dark. Good overcomes evil, love wins, and God wins in the end. For 18 months, I trained my body, begged for money from strangers, family, friends, raised my kids, figured out the logistics of the expedition. And then for 15 and a half days, I ran 3,063 miles from Los Angeles to New York, averaging 51 and a half miles a day to fulfill a calling that I neither understood nor agreed with, but I obeyed. For a long time, I didn't speak openly about the fact that the transcontinental run was a calling from God. I thought people would think I was insane or crazy. I already felt like a lot of people thought I was insane and crazy for setting out to run across the United States. Just to add that, I thought God told me to do it, and I figured I bought myself a one-way ticket to the loony bin. With a healthy amount of time and reflection, I now realize that it is insane and crazy to think that I could have taken on such a challenge, survived it, and completed it at such a pace without God's calling, protection, and provision. First, I was in a severe depression. Depressed people don't just snap their fingers and decide with conviction or motivation to take on a seemingly impossible goal. Doesn't happen. The depression was severe, with dark, dark thoughts. None of the triggering factors of the depression had improved. Sight loss was there, unemployment was there, wasn't driving, still single parent. However, on the day of the calling, my depression and its causes seemed to have no effect on my ability to make a 180 degree shift in my behavior. And that began a 20 month expedition into the unknown. Second, it was beyond my physical abilities. I'd ran some marathons, ultra marathons, but nothing compared to what I was gonna attempt. My goal for the Transcon was to run 50 miles a day or more. As I learned later, it's a world-class pace. Only six people at the time had crossed at 50 miles a day or more, and no blind person attempted it. I'd been depressed, I wasn't running, I was out of shape. I wasn't a sponsored athlete, hadn't won any races, mid-pack runner. If my body could withstand what I was envisioning, it would truly be a Cinderella story, and I always root for the underdog. Third, it would be a miracle to survive the training and the trans transcontinental run with my limited eyesight. Literally, a miracle to survive. As of this writing, I've been hit about 40 times by cars, scooters, bikes, while I've been on foot. People have died crossing the U.S. on foot, and I'd be attempting this with my limited eyesight, tunnel vision, and legal blindness. I never ran on highways or interstates where vehicles travel extremely fast. Up to that point, I never ran directly at a semi-truck traveling 75 miles an hour the opposite direction and past each other with just a few feet between us. Somehow I survived all the miles and close calls, had some collisions. I know I was protected by God, otherwise I wouldn't be here to read this to you and to talk to you. Back to the topic of this whole video. I want people to know that God does in fact call us to do many things. 
in many different ways of many different magnitudes. Our callings don't need to be known or witnessed by others in order to be real. God's work is mysterious at times. Sometimes I feel an urge to speak to a person, pick up a piece of litter, or do a nice gesture. At one time, I was called to run across the U.S. God is with us, and He communicates with us in the regular. It's our job to listen intently and embrace God's call, regardless of the magnitude or frequency of God's callings. Rest assured, He's always in our lives. God is always on our side, and He wants us to do His will, love Him, and love each other. Sometimes people ask me if I'd run across the United States, and my response is simply this. Absolutely not, if it's my choice. But if God calls me to run across the U.S. again, you'll barely be able to perceive me turn and start running in this instant. This is Jason, and listen to those callings as they're happening. Have a great day. Onward.